just listening to Tom as you were sharing with the communion there, and uh, just a really important truth that, that he was bringing out there about the spirit, the spirit world. You know, the Old Testament, they lived under a law, the law of sin and death. The Old Covenant was a law of sin and death, but the New Covenant is a law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus. That's why Jesus spoke words. He just didn't speak words because he had nothing else to do, uh, talking to a bunch of guys or girls. He spoke truth and he spoke things that would smash through the enemy's strongholds. And he said, marvel not, he said this to a religious man, marvel not that I say to you, you must be born again. See, if you're not born again, people don't get born again, they're still under the old covenant. They're still under the old law of sin and death. But praise, I can say thank you, Jesus, that I've got a new covenant. Amen? The spirit of life now lives in me, and I'm going to live forever. Amen? Do you believe that? So, Father, we thank you for that. We thank you for the reality. We thank you for the truth. We thank you, Lord, for the victory of the cross of Calvary. We thank you, Lord, for this great salvation, my God, where you've set us free where you've totally wiped the, the slate clean, where my sins, while I was living under that old covenant, when I, was, when I was dead in my trespasses and sins, my God, now you've made me alive in Christ. Hallelujah. And I can live because of, of the blood of Jesus, because of the cross of Calvary, because you rose again, triumphant all your foes, and we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. And everybody said, why don't we give him a big thank you for that. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. No longer under the old covenant, now a new covenant, a better covenant. Pentecost Sunday today, the purpose of Pentecost, the power of God. You know, God wants to overshadow you. He wants to empower you. He wants to give you the gifts of the Spirit. He wants to open your eyes of your understanding so that we know who our God is. And today I'm praying that that's what will happen today. God released his power on that day of Pentecost to his church. He released it. The new creation believer was birthed. The new church was birthed. How many people know that old hymn we used to sing? Power, power, wonder-working power. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. What's the, how's that? What's the next bit? There is, <laughs> all right, oh, shaka boy. I'm sorry I started that. But now I sound like a chook farm. <laughs> There's power, power, wonder-working power. There is power in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Do you believe that today? It's not just anybody's blood. It's the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son. There's power, power, wonder-working power. You know, the Bible says in Acts chapter 1, 8, it says, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. A lot of times we just read that, and, but he said, I want you to understand this. I want you to be, receive power that you will become a witness unto me. Witness unto me. That you will, it's not just given so that we can walk around like, like uh, you know, the guys there that do the pumping <laughs> and get those, you know, those big biceps and that. You know, I've got to be careful here if I don't flex too much. I could rip this shirt, you know. <laughs> the only part that's stretching is the belly part. But anyhow, it, it wasn't just given so that we could, you know, be like that. He, he wants us to have power so that we can live the life for him, so we can be a witness for him, that we can, that we can go tell everybody that Jesus is alive. And, and, you know, today people need to know that Jesus is alive because there's so many that are living under that old covenant. They're living out of death, and, and there's no life for them. They're, they will die in their trespasses and sins. And, and you know, he, he spoke there, he said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Amazing scriptures. And then it goes on and says, and on the book of Acts, and says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. I, you know, I dream about this. I, I meditate on this. I think of this often as what 
it must have been like those days when the power of God was poured out upon this earth. But you know what he said? He said in the last days, he said, I'm going to do it again. He says there's going to come a greater revival. There's, going to, there's a latter rain that's going to be greater than the former rain. There's something, you know, there's an expectancy that's got to rise up within us. And I pray that it's in my lifetime, but if it's not, I'm still going to be expecting it. I'm still going to be believing for it because it's what God said he's going to do in the last days there's going to come a greater outpouring of the Spirit. There's going to come a manifestation of God's power. And so you can just bathe yourself in that and think about that and dream about that. But even as I read this here and I, and I understand what God did then, that there's going to come a, 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 a latter rain revival that's going to be greater than this. But as I read it, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. There was, a, there was something there that, that wasn't just a little trickle, but it filled the whole place, amen. Amazing things. There appeared under the divided tongues as of fire. What that really means there, divided tongues of fire, the outpouring of the Spirit just didn't come on one or two, but it was divided and it came upon them all. See, there's enough for every one of us, amen. There's enough for you and there's enough for me. Say, there's enough for me. And I want it to land on me today. I want, I want to invite the Holy Spirit to come in. It, it, it was distributed. The power of God was distributed upon every one of them. Fire sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. There's a mighty manifestation. The Bible says in verse 12, it says, so they were amazed. See, the people outside of the experience, the ones that it wasn't divided onto, it wasn't put onto, they saw manifestation, but their minds were still locked in the old way. And as they saw this manifestation, they were all amazed and all perplexed, saying to one another, what Ever could this mean? What does this mean? Others mockingly said, they are full of new wine. And you see, if you don't have an experience with God, you'll try to understand it with your mind. You'll try to take away the power out of it and have some substitute that the enemy wants you to believe in. He wanted them not to believe that this was the power of God, but he wanted them to believe that they were full of new wine. But Peter, hallelujah, but you and I, have got to, it's a time to stand. Arise, shine, for the light has come. It's time for the church to stand up. When people start to mock or when people start to try to use their natural minds, we've got to stand up like Peter. And Peter standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and he said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words, for these are not drunk as you suppose, your natural thinking, whatever it is, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this, what was spoken by the prophet Joel, amen, in the last days, and it will come to pass in the last days, says God, I'll pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Young men shall see visions, hallelujah. Old men shall dream dreams. I believe I want to dream dreams of greatness. I want to dream dreams of revival. I want to dream dreams of that fire coming down. I want to dream dreams of being in a room one day and the whole place will be filled with the power of God. I want to be in a, in a meeting where people jump out of wheelchairs and blind eyes are open and the altars are full of people coming out of the old covenant into, into a new relationship, into a new covenant with God. Amen. I dream, I dream, I dream, I dream. I dream of seeing people coming to the altars. I, I dream of seeing that stadium out there, that football stadium, filled with people with their hands raised, worshipping God. You've got to have a big dream. If you don't have a big dream, you won't. Nothing will happen, amen. God has something there that will wake you up in the morning. The old men shall dream dreams. That's not sitting in a hammock, laying around, singing lullabies. 
It's dreaming dreams of greatness, dreaming dreams of power. Not my men servant and not my maid servant. I'll pour out of my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. See, most of the church today wants prophecy out of the church. When the move of God comes, there's going to be prophecy. Amen. People are going to jump up and prophesy. They're going to speak the word of the Lord. And if they're prophesying out of their own flesh, lightning's going to come out of heaven and strike them. Hallelujah. Fear of God will come. <laughs> you believe that? I'll show wonders of heaven above and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. The sun, sun shall be turned into the darkness, the moon into blood before, before the coming of the great an awesome day of the Lord. So, Father, we're asking you right now. Father, we're asking you right now, God, that you would just waken up something inside of us. Lord, that we would dream dreams. Lord, there would be an expectancy in our heart. There would be an expectancy in our heart, my God, for the greater things to happen. And Lord, we'll give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. See, I want to speak this morning about God's almighty power. God's almighty power. As I, as I share this truth today, be aware that this power is in you. This power is in you. We've got to just, we're not waiting for another Elijah or Elisha. God has said, I will build my church that the gates of Hades will not prevail against. I want to build you so the gates of Hades will not prevail against you. I want you to rise up. I want you to be my voice. I want you to be my people. It's in you now to do the work that God has called you to do. That's the whole purpose of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Power to be a witness. Power to be a carrier of the anointing. In Exodus chapter 7, verse 7, God's people are in bondage. How many people know that today there are literally, I don't know, I, 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 I'm not even going to try to hazard a guess, that how many people are in bondage? See, when we, look, we look back there and we see, okay, they had taskmasters, they had this and they had that. But I want to tell you today there's just as many people in bondage, most surely more in bondage today than ever before. In bondage to, to drugs, alcohol, in bondage, they're locked in a marriage where they're, where they're being abused and smashed. The young people, just people in bondage. God's looking for a people, a generation of people to rise up. One of the interesting things about this story, it says, and Moses was 80 years old and Aaron was 83 years old when they spoke to Pharaoh. We've got to get this thing out of our head that we're old. You've got to, young people, you've got to get this thing out of your head that you're young. There's ne neither Jew nor Greek nor old nor young. <laughs> God should have put that one in. <laughs> because today we look at our age or something like that and we think, oh, I'm old. No, at 80. Moses was called. At 83, Aaron was called. The power of God was on them. The anointing was on them. The Bible says to the youth, despise not your youth. Don't, the devil just keeps saying you're too young. When I first started in ministry, the, the enemy came and said, you're too young. And then I found out that after, I, after a while he started saying, now you're too old. <laughs> Because he's a liar and a cheat. It's no, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how young you are. Do you believe that today? In Exodus 9, 16, But indeed, for this purpose, I have raised up Pharaoh that I may show my power. But an interesting verse, that I may show my power in you and that my name may be declared in all the earth. You see, the church is at the moment, please forgive me, and I'm not trying to be critical. I'm talking about myself, but the church has not been a great representative of Christ. 
Something's got to happen. Come on. Something's got to happen. Light the fire. Tom was talking about it today. Light the fire. Get a fire going inside us, Lord. Light something up inside us that'll stir us, that'll get us out of our complacency. Get us out of negativity, whatever it might be. For this purpose I have raised you up, Pharaoh, that I may show my power and that my name may be declared in all the earth. God wants to show forth his power over the enemy. Do you believe that today? We have to break off wrong thinking because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If you think you can't do it, you'll never make it. You've got to break off wrong thinking. It's got nothing to do with age, how old you are or how, how, or how young you are. It's all about God's power and our obedience. Let me say that again. It's not just enough to have power over us, but it's our obedience. Whether we're going to rise up or whether we're going to continue to sit down. If we rise up, I believe we'll see the victory. I believe God is seeking an occasion to use you to show the world that he is all-powerful. And through you, he may knock the stuffing out of the devil. I almost wrote, knock the snot out of him. And I thought if I said that, you most likely would remember it more. It's not a naughty word. But God wants to knock the snot out of the devil. Amen? You ever seen boxers when they're fighting? <laughs> and, they're, and, they're killing, and the snot, <laughs> everything goes. But anyway, I'll just leave that thought in your mind and I'll let uh, you do whatever you like with it. <laughs> And declare that the Lord God is on the Sunshine Coast. Amen. God is seeking an occasion for you to rise up. God is on the Sunshine Coast. I believe we're going to, that stadium will be filled with born again believers. I believe there's going to be a move of God. So God used an 80 year old and an 83 year old to terrorize the enemy. Old and young alike in this church, are you up for it? That's the question. Are you up for it? Or are you going to allow other things to dictate to you why you don't? Or are you going to rise up? I remember when, when they wanted me to be the the the... the, the what do you call them? Um, the, uh, that, that was easy, that one. <laughs> the principal of the school. I did not believe that I could do that. The devil didn't even believe it. Jesus had trouble with it. <laughs> But you see, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. God's power, Pentecostal power. Every spirit-filled, born-again believer has this power. You've got it now. Ephesians 1.19, and it says, What is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his power? Mighty power. Turn to somebody and say, I got mighty power. Let me say it again. Every born again, spirit filled believer has this dunamis power in them right now. You've got power in you right now. This power is in earthen vessels, it's not a small amount, it's not a trickle, but the exceeding greatness of his power that's in you. 
Paul's whole ministry depended on this great power. Don't go around trying to skype because it's got, we know because we know it's got nothing to do with our power. It's got everything to do with God's power. But too many people are relying on their own power, their own ability, their own education, their own knowledge, their own this. And so they've pushed the Holy Spirit. I thank God that he uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. I praise God that, that I needed the Holy Spirit in every one of those aspects. Because in the natural, I don't have them. But in the Holy Ghost, I have more than enough. <laughs> Amen? You might think that's proud, pride, but I want to tell you, friends, that's what gets you up in the morning. That's what gets you going. That's what will keep you in front, amen. If you believe, if you believe, only believe, all things are possible. It's not a small amount, but the exceeding greatness of his power. The exceeding greatness of his power. That's the power that's in you. Paul's ministry depended on this great power. That same power that you have. The same power that you have was in Paul. Ephesians 3, 7. It says, Of which I became a minister, according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of His power. God is working mightily in me. The power of God is working in you. Amen. The, the Word of God is working in you. The, God, the Word of God is alive that's in you. If we can hear what the Spirit of God wants to say this morning, we will rise up. We will rise up to the challenge. Of which I became a minister, Ephesians 3, 7. According to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of His power. Ephesians 6, 10 says, Finally, my brethren... Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Friend, it's time not to be weak. It's a time to be strong. It's time to, to, to I, I don't know how, but friend, I know what keeps me alive. It's, it's a relationship with God. It's while we're, while we're here singing songs, to be able to listen to the songs and just enter into it and flow into it and Want it and embrace it. This morning, while we're while we're praying, uh, you know, while we're singing the songs, I had my hands in the air and I was crying out, "Where is the God of Elijah? Where is the God of Elisha? Where is that God? Where is He?" And next minute, we start singing songs about His greatness. It's like the, as I, the, when God was answering me through the songs. All my life, He has been faithful. All my life he has been so, so good. Hallelujah. He never, ever changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is God. Amen. The creator, the mighty God. We have a look at his great power. Awesome power. The power that you have. Go home with nothing else. I want you to realize that you have the power. You have the power. It would be great every time we looked at each other, then they say, how are you? You say, i got the power. <laughs> how are you? i got the power. <laughs> how are things? i got the power. How is this? i got the power. <laughs> how to be, if, how to be if, you, if your neighbor said, how is the dog? i got the power. <laughs> How is I got the power, amen. I say, what are you talking about? I got the power. <laughs> Wonder working power, says Millie, amen. I got the power. 2 Kings 7 verse 1. And what we've got to realize is the prophetic is so very powerful. Elijah said, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. You see, this man carried the mantle, carried the anointing, carried the victory. He had, a, had something. But you see, when you start to speak the word, you've got to understand this man had boldness 
and he was aware of God's power to deliver. They're the things that we've got to rearrange the furniture in our head. You've got to know because you know that God has the power to deliver. God has the power to set people free. God has the power. Not my power. It's God's power. But it's God's power in me. Hear the word of the Lord. We know that he said, tomorrow at this hour, barley will be sold at the gate. And I'm not going to go through the whole story. But as he spoke those words, you see, as you speak, as you have that boldness and that awareness that all of my life, God has been so, so good. He's been so faithful. He, he, has, he has triumphed. He has delivered. He has set the captives free. He's done all these sort of things knowing all that. And as you start to speak, like we talked the other week about the Shumanite woman, when, the, when, his, when her son had died, and she went off and they said, how is it with your son? She, she never said, he's dead. She said, all is well. Why? Because she knew that, that she, there was a God who could deliver. There was a God, and she had to be bold. She had to be strong. And so here's, here's this story, but this is another story. But as, as, she, as he spoke those words, it awakened something in the realm of the Spirit. And I'm going to liken us a little bit, if I can, to this, that it says there was four leprous men. It may, they, they were hopeless, no ability, nothing, nothing, nothing. But friend, if you can look at this like this, that inside of you there could be hopelessness and negativity, but as you start to speak it out, it will awaken those things on the inside of you. It awakened these four leprous men. It fell, the, the power fell on that negativity, failure, defeat, hopelessness, whatever it might be. Friend, it's got to be consumed. It's got to be, there's got to come a greater law. And it speaks about these four leprous men. And I'm going to read from verse 3. Now there are four leprous men at the entrance of the gate. And they said to one another, Why are we sitting here till we die? Verse 5. And they rose at twilight. So I'm wanting to say, there's things inside of us, there's things inside of the city, there's things around that as we begin to speak it out, it will awaken things. It will, uh, things will come alive. Things will start to, to rise up. But friend, what's got to happen when, you, when God starts to speak to you? You've got to rise. You've got to rise up. You've got to come up, rise above the negativities, rise above the failure, rise above the, the defeat, rise above the, the, the voices in your head, rise above whatever the enemy is trying to do to push you down. Rise above that you'll never ever make it. Rise above that it, it'll never happen for you. Rise above it. As you rise above it, the power of God will manifest himself through you. You see, these four leprous men, and it says, and, the, and, they, and they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And then when the, they come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, there was no one there. Listen to verse 6. For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses and the noise of a great army. And they said to one another, Look, the king of, of Israel is hired against us, the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians, to attack us. Therefore they arose and fled at twilight. They left their camps and packed their tents, their horses and their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. Friend, I want to tell you, if you want the enemy that's, that's harassing you, if you want the enemy there that's, that's besieged you, if you want the enemy there that's, that's this, this situation wasn't just a simple situation. They were, they were killing babies and eating babies. The whole place was surrounded. They only had a few horses and a few things left to eat. They said that they were eating donkey's heads. 
It was a, it was a, a, a situation that was full of negativity. I don't care how negative things are around about you today. It doesn't matter how negative or how bad it looks. If you can hear the word of the Lord, if you can hear the word of the Lord, if you can grab some of those prophecies you've had over your life, if you can hear as you read the Bible and as, as you read it, put yourself in those pages. God, you're speaking to me. God, this is me you're talking to. And if you can begin to rise up and head out towards the enemy's camp, then God will come upon your life and cause you to sound like an exceeding great army. And the enemy will flee from you. Amen. The enemy will flee. The Bible says resist the devil. He will flee from you. There were four leprous men sitting at the gate, and they said, it wouldn't matter how old or how young, but right now, I'm speaking to some people. There are four people, young and old, sitting in the congregation of Global Connections who are saying, I'm going to rise up. I'm going to go out to the enemy's camp. I'm going to take back what he's stolen. I'm going to take back what he's stolen. I'm going to rise up. I'm going to rise up. I pray that you today. I pray that you today. I'm going to rise up. Then and only then, after they rose up, verse 5, the Lord went before them and caused the Syrians to hear the sound of a great army. In 1 Kings 18, 21, we hear of another great battle. How long will we halt between two opinions? How long are we just going to sit around and sometimes hallelujah, sometimes praise the Lord. Sometimes, sometimes. How long are we going to halt between two opinions? If God is God, let him be God. If the devil's a God, well, let him be God. We know that Elijah went to the congregation of the people and he said, I alone am the only one that's left. But let's, let's, let's work this out. Let's, 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 let's find out what's going on here. So I said, let's get bullocks and let's cut them to pieces and give the prophets of Baal, there's 450 of them, and let them call upon their God. And I'll call upon my God. And the God who answers by fire, let him be God. The God who answers by fire, let him be God. Friend, it's time to start crying out to God. They, 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 these prophets of Baal, they, they got there and they, they did all their thing and they, they cut the bullock up and they did what they were supposed to do and they're calling upon God and they were doing it all day and all night. And then Elisha said, hey, started to mock him. Hey, perhaps he's asleep. Perhaps he's on a holiday. Perhaps he's there. Perhaps, and, and, and it says, why don't you cry the louder? Perhaps he's asleep. So they shouted the louder and they started to scream. They started to cut themselves until the blood gushed out, the Bible says. Just one little cuts. But the blood started to gush out of them. And then we know the story about the man of God who got water and goodness knows what else and poured water and everything like that. And he called on the name of the Lord. We know there that the fire of God came down. Oh, Father, I want the fire to come down. <laughs> Father, I want the fire to come down. How many people want the fire to come down? Lord, we want the fire to come down. I want to see the fire of God come down. And, and my God, we thank you for that. And of course, when this happened, the people, that as they saw the demonstration of God's power, licked up the whole water, licked up the, the, all the, the wood and the, and the animal, everything. And, and when they saw the power of God, they fell on their faces. 
They fell on their faces, and the man of God says, grab those prophets of Baal. He took them down to some place, and, and he executed them all down there. Friend, I don't know about you, but trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. But in every way acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. It's a time to get hold of God. This is not a time to play church. You can play church, friends. You know, when, when I first got saved and got involved a little bit, I didn't understand. I didn't understand the power of God. I didn't understand the anointing of God. I didn't understand anything. I, I got saved. Praise God, I got saved. Amen. But, but, but I, I just joined with the rest of them and, and, and became like the rest of them and started playing church. I used to walk in there with my eight-track, what do you call them, record player? No, what, what is it? Uh, yeah, anyhow, one of those things. It was that big, it was that wide. I'd walk in with that. I would put it down there. I'd make sure I got a seat on the end. I had my microphone sticking out like that and everybody could see me. You know what? I never listened to one of those things. I was playing church. Playing church. Playing church. But one day, one day I remember it well. I've spoken about it many times. I was at a children's camp. We were out there praying under the stars, hands raised, just crying out to God, a little bit like this morning. Where is the God of Elijah? Where is the God of Elisha? I want to, I want to see this God. Amen. And this there praying and seeking God, and the power of God hit me. The anointing, it, friend, you must, you must, you must be touched by the power of God. You must have an encounter with God. I got saved, but I never had a real encounter. But that night I had an encounter with God that changed my life forever, amen. Changed me forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. It's not time to play church. It's time to be the church. Time to be the church. You might feel like you've got nothing left to give. Moses was on the backside of a desert. Failed miserably. 80 years of age. My wife keeps telling me that age is only a number. Four leprous men, nothing to give but obedience. Mark 16, Jesus walks in the room. Oh, Father, we're singing, walk in the room. Walk in the room. Jesus walked in the room. And there they were. And he upbraided them for their unbelief and their hardness of heart. He, he walked in the room. How many people want God to walk in your room? Come on, give me a wave. How, how many people want you to, God to walk in your room? Walked in the room. Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table and rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. Can you go up the next one? You can't. That's my fault. Let's have a, let me read it. Let's read it, Mark 16. Let's just read Mark 16 because it's so very, very real. Mark chapter 16. Jesus walked in the room. Hallelujah. What an amazing thing. He appeared to 11. They sat at the table. Verse 15, and he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. See, what I like is Jesus ignored their unbelief and hardness of heart. You know why? Because he walked in the room. The day Jesus walked into my room, even though it was underneath the stars, all the unbelief and hardness of heart left. He who believes and is baptized will be saved that he does, does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. 
to take up serpents or drink anything deadly or by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up to heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. These, these words as he spoke, and as he spoke these words, he, he went up into heaven. And it says, and I'm going to read it my way, and they got up, they arose, and they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. Here, here's a story here of getting up and rising up. I guess what I'm trying to say this morning is that I want to rise. I want to get up. I want to stop playing church. I want to be the church. I want to acknowledge and understand the awesome power of God. I, I want to know today the power of his resurrection. I want the God of Elijah, the God of Elisha, the God of old, the God of the new, the God of the, the, uh, of the, of the early church to manifest himself. Amen. I want to see the, see the name of Jesus alive and risen. I want to see the church flourish. The Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come today. Father, stir us today. Can you stand to your feet today as we pray? Father, will you stir us today? Will you stir us today, my God? Will you stir us? Lift us up, my God. Cause us to rise. Lord, your book is full of people that, that rose up. The four leprous men, they rose up. They went towards the enemy's camp. Lord, they wanted to take back. They didn't know what they were doing some half the time. And Lord, that's most surely us. We don't know what we're doing all the time. We're just being obedient. We don't know when, we, when you said lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. It, it sounds so absurd. It seems so stupid. But my God, through obedience, we will do it. We will believe. We will lay hands on the sick and watch them recover in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that we would be obedient with our voice. We'll, we'll tell people that we've got the power, we've got the anointing, whatever it might be that will cause a, another question, another something that they'll ask you, what are you talking about? Father, help us today. And Lord, I pray too today that people would understand if they don't know you, that they're living under that law of sin and death. But Lord, you want to bring the spirit of life into them. You want to bring the spirit of life into them. Right now in this place, while we're, while we're just in his presence, standing in his presence, if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, if you're backslidden your way from God, if, you, if you're not real sure where you stand with God today, and, and I don't know what's going on in your heart, but you just want God. You're saying, God, will you come into my heart? Will you forgive me? Will you set me free? I wonder if you just quickly slip up your hand today that I might see it. I want to pray with you today. I want to, I want to see your hand if that's you today. Just lift it up quickly. God knows you. He already knows you. Amen. I'm not going to prolong that then. You know what you need. You know what you not want. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you right now, if you're in this place and, you, and you're honestly saying, God, I want to be stirred. I, I, want, I want an encounter with you. I, I want you to touch me afresh today. I, I, want, I, I want something to, that if there's leprosy, if there's something dead inside me, God, will you raise me up? Will, will, you, will, you, lift, will, you, will you lift me up, my God? If there's giftings inside me, it's like those four leprous men. If there's stuff inside me, my God, that, that, that has died inside me, Father, will you bring it back to life? Will you breathe on it again today? Will you touch me again today? Will, will you bring the spirit of evangelism back into me, God? Will, will, you, will you, Lord, years ago I used to, I used to, I used to. God, you never stopped, I stopped. God, I don't want to stop that dead thing inside me. Would you raise it up again? Would you, would, you, would you touch me again today, God? Would you, would you touch me again? Oh, Father, would you touch me again? That's, if you're like that today, quickly give me a wave today. Say that, I want, I want, I want, I want. I want you, Lord. I want you to come. I want you to come in your power and your authority. I want you to touch me afresh today, my God, in Jesus' name. If you're serious with Jesus today and you've raised your hand, or if you're too shy to raise your hand, why don't you quickly come? Let us pray with you today. Let us pray with you today. Just come quickly. Let me pray with you. Let us pray. Let us pray today. Let us pray. Let us believe God today. Let, us, let, let the Spirit of God get around your life. Tom and Sharon are going to come as well and minister and work in the word of knowledge or prophetic, whatever it might be, whatever God wants. The Bible 
says this, it says, you have not because you ask not. Ask, it's a time to ask, it's a time to seek, it's a time to knock, it's a time to call, time to cry out to God, time to cry out to God. How many people are hungry for God? Come on, how many people are hungry for God? How many people are hungry for God, I said? How many people are hungry? How many people are hungry? What? Come on, why don't you, two or three, one shall put to flight, one thousand, two shall put to flight, ten thousand. Come on, let us pray with you this morning.